On my channel, I like to balance things out. I like to make sure that you know the good with the bad. I always say that any channel out there, you can run a search, you can talk to anyone, you can pick up the phone and call any local real estate agent, and they will tell you all about the brochure living in Southwest Florida. But here on my channel, I like to make sure that we're balanced. You know, not every area is Shangri-La. I always say this. There's always good and bad with any area. No matter how good an area seems, we always like to have the balance of the good and the bad because if we're only talking about the good, if we're only talking about brochure living, then we're really not living in reality. We're just not. So today we're going to be talking about Cape Coral. And some of you know how I feel about Cape Coral. Can I just say it? It is not my favorite. It is not my favorite place in Florida. Listen, it might be your favorite place and that is totally okay. We can have a little healthy debate. We can have a little healthy debate on this channel. But today's topic is why Cape Coral will fail you. Why it will not be the one off of Naples. Why you should not confuse what Cape Coral has to offer with maybe like what Naples has to offer or even Bonita Springs or even Venice or any other area in between. In my opinion, Cape Coral is its own unique little section and I'm going to tell you why. I'm just going to tell you the way that I perceive it as a person that works works in this area and has worked in this area for many, 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 many years. I have a lot of buyers and sellers that have passed through the area. Many of them still there and many of them like it. But I'm going to be honest here because that's that's the way that we roll on this channel. The predominance of people do not like it. And I'm going to explain to you why. So this video is all about why Cape Coral will fail you. All right, so let's just jump right into facts. I'm just going to put you here on my screen and let's just jump into facts. I'm going to pop up, not going to put in any information as far as prices or bedrooms, bathrooms, pools, none of that. I'm just going to say how many homes, single family homes, are available for sale right now today as of the filming of this video on the market in Cape Coral. There are 2,605. Do you think that's a lot of inventory? I think that's an awful lot of inventory. So starting at $120,000 on the low end, that's probably, let's see what that is. We won't even guess. Let's just look. All right, so that this construction stalled mid-construction. Sales price is based on the stage of construction, which is this. And this, what you're seeing here, wow, there is a lot of this where people just lost funding. That's what stalled means. Here's another one. Here's another one. I bet it's all the same builder. So here's a, a finished home. Let's, let's start with that. 210,000 and you can see here the days on market. Look how many days on market. So DOM means days on market. CDOM means cumulative days on market. So like if you had a fall through, you can see here that it's a little bit different. And then when that happens, sometimes we'll just jump in the history. It looks like it expired and they brought it back. So that's what that means. Now let's come up here again and let's take a look at what the max price is. So I'm just going to flip this and we'll see. So if we go highest to lowest, 7 million all the way down to 120,000. 7 million is, I don't know what somebody's thinking. See, even a home like this, a five bedroom riverfront, I guess we'll see, right? So on in Cape Coral, if you were on big open water, something similar to this one, big open water is what's going to bring you any uniqueness in Cape Coral. The bigger the water, the bigger the price. I don't know about some of these numbers that people are asking, but the bigger the water, the bigger the price. Here is where the problem lies in Cape Coral. 
If you look at just your run-of-the-mill pool home, we're just going to do just a standard pool home with no water view. 602 homes to choose from. 602. It's just too many. It, there's so many. And if we eliminate the pool, 1,645. So, and you know, in all fairness, that would be pool or not pool. But if you look at that, just your standard typical home, that that is so much competition. 1,645 homes competing with each other. And basically, most of them, if they're not waterfront, most of them are just your standard three bedroom, two bath pool home, or maybe four bedroom, two bath pool home with no waterfront. When there's no waterfront, there's no uniqueness to the property. And that is the problem in Cape Coral is that if you want something that feels like it's very Florida, it just doesn't. So that's the first issue that I have with Cape Coral. It's just not unique enough. And then also, it's a very like suburban. So I'm gonna make the assumption that if you wanted to move from Michigan or Minnesota or Massachusetts or wherever it is you're coming from up north. I've had a lot of people from Illinois lately and I'm Midwest myself, I'm from the Midwest. So when you leave those areas, you wanna to move to an area, when you think about Florida, you're thinking about a tropical place you want to live. You want to live like you live in Florida. You want to see palm trees. You want a beautiful lush greenery. You want to hear beachy Caribbean music going on. You think about boutiques and cute little restaurants, bars, bar and grills, cute little boutiques. It needs to feel like you're living in Florida. The problem with Cape Coral is it feels like you're living in the suburbs with some palm trees scattered here and there. That's what it feels like. Why is that? Well, there are some, there are some little restaurants that are cute. There might be a few handful of boutique shops, but when you put that on the curve of the rest of Florida, some parts of Florida, Sarasota, Venice, Naples, even parts of Fort Myers, like Fort Myers Beach as they rebuild it. There are so many areas, and we haven't even touched going across the other coast. There are so many parts of Florida that do feel like you're living in Florida. They feel like you're living in a beachy, boaty, wildlife, birds, Florida birds, all of those things that people enjoy and all those things people are looking forward to when they move to Florida. Those things, in my opinion, are not prevalent in Cape Coral. It feels very much like a high traffic, poorly maintained suburban area with some palm trees. And yes, around the outskirts of it, you can see some water. Yes, there are some beautiful water areas, but when you put it on the curve of the rest of Florida and you get to live anywhere you wanna live in Florida, that is your choice. It just falls short, in my opinion. There's just not too much to do that feels anything more than Kohl's or Home Depot or Ross Dress for Less or Target. And I'm gonna make the assumption you're not moving to Florida for those kind of things. Now, I'm gonna say this again because this does get missed a lot with people. I just had somebody last week that I'm gonna show them property and they rented a house in Cape Coral and they do have a nice water view at the house that they rented but they thought there was a beach. They thought there was a beach in Cape Coral and there is no beach in Cape Coral. Now, some of you that live in Cape Coral or that visit Cape Coral or maybe somebody just wants to have a little argument this morning is going to tell me that the Yacht Club has a beach. Now, if you, if you think that a beach is just a little area of land where somebody dumped a bunch of sand on it and you're butting up to the river, if you find that to be a beach, then listen, you can find a beach in Illinois, you can find a beach in Missouri, you can find a beach pretty much anywhere if you call that a beach. 
personally, when I say beach, and I'm talking about Southwest Florida, I'm thinking of the Gulf of Mexico. When I say beach, and I'm talking about the East Coast of Florida, I'm talking about the Atlantic Ocean. I am not talking about the river where somebody brought in some sand. I'm not talking about, like for example, in Naples, there's a, a community that's very nice, but they have a, this is a community called the Quarry, and they have what they call a beach club. It's exactly that. It's a man-made lake, it's a quarry, and they dump some sand, and it's nice, but it's not a beach, but they call it a beach club. And I've had people think that they're gonna be part of a beach club similar to like Pelican Bay in Naples, where it actually does have a beach club, where they take you up by tram to your private, very nice beach on the Gulf of Mexico. That, I think, is what people are thinking of when they're thinking of the beach or a beach club, something along those lines. That is not the Yacht Club, okay? Listen, feel free to disagree with me, but I don't think of it as a beach. So, back to my original thought, Cape Coral does not have a beach. And when people rent in Cape Coral thinking they're gonna go to the beach every day in Cape Coral, it doesn't exist. Now, can you go drive to the beach? Yes. Are you going to drive, especially in season, for an hour or more? Yes. So just be aware of that. If you move to Cape Coral full time and think that you're gonna be able to get a job like that, you may be able to, but is it a job that's gonna pay the bills? Is it a job that's gonna pay the rent? That's what you have to ask yourself because think about it. Are there big corporations in Cape Coral? Not so much. And listen, not so much in all of Southwest Florida. But if you're moving to Cape Coral and you're not a doctor or a nurse and you're thinking you'll be able to get a high paying job, there aren't that many. I'm just being honest with you. Please do your due diligence on the front end with that. There just are not that many high paying jobs that would help you support a lifestyle in Florida because remember, it's not cheap. It really is not cheap. You've got to think about the cost of insurance. You've got to think about the cost of putting a roof on a property. It is not inexpensive. The other thing, the other thing you may not love with Cape Coral is that in my opinion and the opinion of people that live there, the city services could be a whole lot better. They have had a lot of problem with trash pickup. Now they've worked through it, but it was months. It was months of people having to deliver their own trash to a designated spot. Now, if you live in an apartment, maybe you're okay with that. Maybe you feel like, well, it's no big deal. I walk it down to a dumpster. But if you're living in a, in a home, in a house, you're making the assumption that the truck's gonna come by and pick up your trash. They've had trouble with that. They've had trouble with water. They've had trouble with sewers. And now the rumor is that part of Cape Coral is actually sinking. And the rumor is that that is based on too much building, problems with water. You cannot just keep building and building and building and building and not put some kind of substantive infrastructure in ahead of that to make sure that these things don't happen. Now, Florida as a whole, there are many areas in Florida that do have sinkholes, but it's not necessarily been so much of a problem in Cape Coral. It has kind of flown below the radar. Why? Because there's a lot of other low-hanging fruit in Cape Coral. So it kind of gets overlooked to some degree, the water issue. And I know some of you live there and you'll argue with me that there is no water issue. Well, listen, talk to people that live in the northern part of the Cape. There are water issues in Cape Coral. I promise you that. And if you don't believe me, then listen, wing it and see how you do. That's all I can really tell you. I am trying to help you with this. I'm trying to make sure that you don't wind up in a situation that you don't wanna wind up in. But the city services, even the mayor, it's all over the news. There's been so many problems with leadership in Cape Coral. And I think it has such potential. I always say, if they put something in Cape Coral that was similar to like, what's in a stero, a gigantic coconut point. I really think that would enormously help. It would bring jobs to the area. Would it bring super high paying jobs? No, but all of 
the kids, the younger people, somebody that wants a job that pays reasonably well. Things like farmer's markets that you can have in the parking lot. You can have events, you can have little concerts. There's so much you can do in those outlets outside of just the shopping alone, which a lot of people love to come to Florida and shop, do all it. There's so many people that show up and do all their Christmas shopping in Florida, and it's just nice. You know, you're shopping with Christmas music in a pair of shorts, going store to store, moving your car in your big, beautiful outdoor mall. You can get something to eat. It's just a nice thing to have available to a community. They just don't have anything like that. Yes, they have Target. Yes, they have Home.